rejection. It can affect our relationships, self-worth, and even our identity. We can't control when rejection happens, but we can control how we react when it does. Relationship coach Kate Warman shares how to turn pain into purpose in her new book, Thank You for Rejecting Me. Well, Kate, welcome to the show. I am so happy to be talking to you today. Hi, Ashley. So excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> it is an honor. It is an honor. Well, first, let's go back. Tell us a little bit about your childhood and how that really influenced you into your line of work and uh, how it led you to write this book, ultimately. Yeah, girl. So I love my family, but you know, we all have things that have happened in our childhood that shape who we are today. For me, my parents were incredible. Um, but there was some tumultuous situations happening in my family upbringing. It led me to in high school, be really into dating and guys and wanting to seek validation from men. And this led me to date 10 years back to back from about 14 to 24. So I had a lot of relationships, <laughs> a lot of rejection. And at the end of those 10 years, I ended up in an abusive relationship in a really toxic situation. And that led me down a journey of questioning, who am I really? Who is Kate outside of relationships? Who is Kate outside of needing validation? Who does God say that I am? And that led me on a journey to figuring out who God really calls me to be and what my unique imprint and identity is. And here I am today, never thought I would be a dating coach, helping <laughs> alongside other men and women in their dating lives. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is so awesome. And I, I love your podcast, The Heart of Dating. Shout out to that. But I mean, obviously <laughs> Thanks, you, you are a dating coach. So what was rejection a common topic people would need help overcoming? Yes. So that was actually the funny thing when I was dating coaching people, you know, we don't just go, I'm not just the Will Smith hitch female version, you know, getting people on dates. It's really more than that. My goal is to help people in their relationships with God, the relationship with themselves, and then the relationship with others, which includes dating, of course. Mm -hmm. But so often when I was date coaching them, um, I would see that we couldn't even get to the relationship with others because we really had to first work through their own relationship with themselves and their relationship with God. And so many of the patterns I recognized was that we are rejecting ourselves before others even have the chance. And wow. we are living through so much of the pain of our past rejections that are impacting how we see ourselves and how we show up in our lives and then in our dating lives, of course, too. Yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> powerful. Well, you talk about how rejection doesn't have to be the thing that destroys us, which for many it can, but you said that it you can use it to build us up. What do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So I don't think the first thing you say after you're rejected is, oh my gosh, well, thank you for rejecting me, you know, <laughs> but what yeah. I mean, but I, what I, I really believe it is painful. It is hard and you should give yourself space to grieve and go through those layers of grief. However, what I have seen in my life and so many others is that through pressing through the pain, healing through the pain, through time, God is working all things together. And through mm -hmm. time, you will see that that rejection is redirecting you to something else, or potentially that rejection has protected you from something that wasn't supposed to be something that was healthy for you or good for you. And so but underneath every rejection, I actually ultimately believe there is a gift within the rejection. If we're willing to go on the noble journey of healing and facing some of the pain and the grief and the trauma from that rejection. Yeah, definitely. Well, many Many times we reject ourselves. I mean, you just talked about that before others can, yeah. turning it into self-hatred. I mean, how do we keep yeah. from falling into this cycle of really just hating ourselves? You know, friend, it's honestly the first thing is that we have to get to a place where we are like, heck no, I do not want to live under this, these mounds of shame and self-hatred and lies and doubts and negative beliefs that I think about myself. You know, the Bible talks very clearly about being renewed by the transformation of our mind. And that's yes. wonderful. But that also means we have to partner with God to make that happen. Mm -hmm. We don't just snap our fingers and like magically our brains are transformed. Like we actually have to take pro an active part of the process of saying, you know what? These mindsets are not serving me well. And I don't want to live with these things plaguing my life. I don't want to see myself in this way. The ways I'm seeing myself, the ways I'm talking to myself are not in line with the way God sees me and how God would talk to me. I mean, actually, I really believe that in many ways, 
we are our own worst bully um, mm. internally. Um, we would never say the things that we say to ourselves to someone else, yeah. because if we did, those people probably wouldn't be our friends, you know? <laughs> so we have to be kinder and more loving to ourselves. And a lot of that is work that we have to do in partnership with the Holy Spirit and be active in that process. Yeah, I love that. And it's so true. Well, right after you submitted the manuscript for this book, you went through a pretty difficult breakup. How did yeah. rereading your book of final time actually help you get Get over that rejection. Yeah, I think the irony of writing a book on rejection, it was very hard and painstaking to put those stories into words. And I think it subconsciously, I was like, okay, God, like we have a deal, right? I'm going to write this book on rejection and then no more rejection, right? Um, but the point was, I wrote the book knowing that that wasn't the case, you know? And mm. so when rejection hit again, at first I was like, oh gosh, is this a cruel joke? But what I really realized was that I wrote those words so much so to actually heal myself. And they were mm. things that I needed to read again. Um, and though that breakup was painful and hard, and I don't want to sugarcoat that and pretend that rejection doesn't hurt. Yeah. I cried a lot. I lamented, but I had tools already built in place mm. that I could pick up and more quickly deal with the pain and the healing and processing of that to the point of today, six months later, I feel good and I'm ready yeah. to date again. And mm. that's because I've done the work before that rejection even happened. Wow, mm. I love that. Well, last question, Kate, I wish we had more time, but what do you want readers to take away from your book? You know, girl, I think the one ultimate thing is eight years ago when I was in an abusive relationship, there was really no one who said, hey, Kate, what you're going through is valid your pain. I hear it. I see it. And you are not alone and you are not crazy. And what I really wanted for, was just for somebody to make me feel seen and not alone. And so ultimately my heart and my goal in this book is for somebody to pick it up, no matter what they're going through, through rejection of any kind and feel seen and feel loved and know that yes, rejection will still happen, but they can be stronger in the midst of it. And that God is by their side there's a way to hopefully grieve and that he's weaving all of these things together behind the scenes for something way more beautiful than you could ever imagine. <laughs> yeah, amen to that. Well, Kate, thank you so much for joining us today. And her book is called Thank You for Rejecting Me. And guys, this is for everyone. This is not just for singles, but seriously for anyone in any situation. And it's available wherever books are sold. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.